Hello and welcome. This is Taladin of Tal's Minecraft. Uh, today we're not doing any Minecraft videos. We are working on a video for my uh, mush for Winter's Edge, uh, which is uh, mushes are about text-based gaming and uh, massive multiplayer online role-playing. Um, today I'm going to be covering the Potato Mush client. Who, which is written by Mike at Penmush. Uh, pretty good fella. He's um, made it a cross-platform mush client, so it works on Linux and Windows. They're currently working on a Mac version. Um, they've got to get something down with the binaries. But anyways, uh, today we're going to be going over that. So let's jump right in. Now when you download Potato under Linux, it's going to come in a tar.gz or a .zip file you're going to unzip that and it will create the potato.vfs directory and I've just put in a directory under my home directory named potato um, what you're going to want to do is go into your potato.vfs directory and you can list of course the, the uh, files in there it does require TCL to be installed. You notice the main.tcl file here uh, is a TCL um, a file extension, so you need you need Tickle installed. Uh, and there's one other thing, but it goes into that under the code information under the Google Code or the installation inf information under the Google Code uh, directory or resource. And I will be putting a link to that below in the video description. Um, and it shows how to how to get all that installed and whatnot. Uh, under Windows, you'll simply click the Potato Executable. Under Linux, you're going to run the main.tcl file, and of course, you can write a quick script to run that. Once you run it, it's going to come up with the Potato interface, and this is a Potato Mush client. You notice it has a black screen here, and it has two inputs down went down here. Uh, you have the potato mu client information if it's connected then of course it has the date and the time pretty sparse looking interface but there's a lot going on here under the hood uh, now keep in mind I do not personally use potato um, because I've used tiny fugue which is another uh, command line mush client I've used it for years it's not as simple as potato to get started with there's a lot of configuration options that you have to um, that you have to do with the tiny fugue that is not in the potato mush client. Uh, so potato is a lot easier for new, uh, mush users to play with. Particularly, like I say, it is, it, uh, as you see, it is for Windows and Linux. Um, and I prefer that because I'm a Linux user and all my friends use Windows. So it's good to have a program that I can help them with by loading it up myself without having to load a, virtual machine or anything like that you're going to notice a couple of options here of course you got file edit view logging options tools and help uh, you'll notice a couple of links here open address book add new world quick connection what you're going to want to do is uh, when you get first get started you're going to want to add new world and it will automatically add it to your address book you're going to put in the name of the mush uh, you can have spaces and quotation marks or whatever you're going to put in the address of the mush or the host name of the mush for in the case of Winter's Edge, it's winter.mushpark.com. And the port for the mush, in our case, it's going to be port three, excuse me, 3000. So it's going to kick this basic Windows, uh, basic settings up here. And you can expand that so you can see the whole thing, what's going on. Of course, it's got your world name, the address, and the port. If it uses SL, SSL or not, which is a secure socket layer connection, we're not going to worry about that right now. Default character, character description, proxy information, and mush type, auto, mud, or mush. You can leave that on mush. You can go to characters. Now, if you have a character already, then, of course, you're going to put in the character name here and his password. And... It will have, you know, you'll be able to put in whatever password it is. For this one, I'm simply going to use guest and guest. 
and that will allow me to um, automatically connect to the guest account. Now we're going to save this. Of course you can always add another character, edit characters, delete characters, um, anything like that. So what we're going to do is we've saved that character. We need to go back to the basics. See here where it says default character, no default character. We're going to drop that down and we're going to click on guest. It will automatically log into the guest character or whatever character you choose at that moment to uh, log into it will automatically log into that character uh, then of course there's also commit connection information you know auto reconnect auto reconnect after negotiate encoding all this stuff is stuff that you really don't have to worry about um, the only thing that I may suggest to folks to use is the is the use the not keep alive that will help keep your connection alive and then of course you can go into the display under ANSI color and fonts that you can set your colors uh, you can also I believe you can set your background colors as well um, the activity settings do you want the flash bar to, uh, or excuse me the task bar to flash whenever there's any activity in the window do you want to flash the system tray icon show the words activity in the world name show new activity clear previous new activity all of that um, you can limit the number of output lines and limit the number of spawn lines. All this stuff is not really going to mean a whole lot to you guys, but that's okay. These are sane settings, so you don't really have to worry about it. The F commands, really, once you get into mudding and mushing, you will get to the point where you will want to be able to hotkey certain commands. This is where you can uh, bind commands to, mush commands to your F keys. You'll see F1 is not an option. That's always bound to help. Um, timers, you can add timers. Auto sends, you know, send upon connect before login, send before login info, send after login info. And you can keep notes about the, about the world and stuff. Very robust, usable options here to connect see it lists our existing worlds here you can either open address book and go go there but generally your best bet is just click on the existing worlds now you see it connects me up to the guest character here uh, I'm in the waiting room it shows all the bulletin board postings and things like that and uh, we're not gonna worry about all that right now going over some of the features of the um, client itself you can uh, from the options window you can configure the world configure events uh, which we've seen the world here um, you can also con uh, customize slash commands um, grab is an existing command that basically it grabs um, information from an object basically it is it's more of a coders or a builders command but as you get into using uh, mush and mux and mud and all those those the, those take space virtual worlds it will allow you to uh, work with objects uh, in a quick manner um, better than having to retype the attributes over and over but we're not going to go into into that too heavily right now um, one of the biggest things that I like about the potato, and again, I'm not, not a huge user of potato. I use tiny few, but the fact that you are able to go in and log the information, you can log from the main window buffer or no buffer. You can leave the log file open. You can append to the file, you can show timestamps, you can log it as HTML. You go in and we're going to call this a uh, video example.log and save that. And once you click log, it tells you now logging to and it gives you the directory. Uh, it also will allow you to have a uh, text editor window. And in conjunction with 
log files or any other type of file, say I have a bunch of at commands that I want to send to the mush at one time, um, like I'm setting my background or anything like that, I can come over here and um, type it all up and, you know, uh, have it outside the um, input window of the mush and not have to worry about cluttering up my input window, not have to worry about losing the information. It's all right there in the text editor. And then I can click on action and send a world. The other thing, and that it automatically sends it. You don't have to retype it in your input window or anything. The other option is you can go to open and open a, a text file that you have created yourself outside of the game and it will when you open that in the text editor it will allow you to then send that text file to the world so you can if you're building or if you're coding or if you're writing out poses beforehand like if you're running a scene uh, dungeon mastering or plot mastering you can write these poses out beforehand in a text file or a number of text files and then just automatically boom send them to world the uh, final option that I want to talk about or final um, feature that I want to talk about is the fact that there are two input windows down here now I know I mentioned that before but it is an extremely extremely useful option that I wish tiny few had um, <coughs> basically the <clears throat> when you're in a role play environment, role play mush, you're going to be typing out this, these ultra long poses, you know, three, four, five, six lines, maybe a paragraph and a half, two paragraphs, whatever. And you're typing, 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 you know, typing, typing, typing. And then somebody asks you a question on channel. Well, you've either got to hit enter and respond to them. You've lost half of your pose or you back, you have to backspace everything out and reply to them or whatever. Well, in Potato, you can come down here, click on the bottom window, and reply to what they said without losing your input in the top window. That is a super, super, super cool feature of the Potato Mush client, and one of the best sellers for me, uh, aside from the fact of the portability between Windows and Linux. Um, in so far as uh, other mush clients, some of them get around this by allowing you to push and pull from a from a keyboard buffer. Tiny Fugue does that. Um, it is not as intuitive as the dual input window. Um, it's very easy to use the client, which is a blessing because a lot of times when you're playing a mush. It's not as easy to use the mush commands, so you want a client that's going to uh, be there, be rock solid, and handle all the background stuff without you having to worry about it. So that's pretty much uh, my tutorial and review on the Potato Mush client. If you're looking for a good mud client, mush client, uh, and you use Linux or Windows, go with the Potato Mush client. It's it's rock solid. Uh, I cannot cannot say enough good about this client. So, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe, and uh, leave a comment below. Especially if you have any questions about anything, I will be putting a uh, link to or yeah, the the host information, the port information to the Winner's Edge Mush down in the description below. If anyone's interested in a apping a character, um, as well as a link to our system document that has all of our theme information in it. Uh, you guys have a blessed day and thanks for watching.